Okay, I was called out to repair Ford Mondeo. The nut had sheared off, exposing the actual bolt that the nut was uh, fastened to. And what I had to do was to weld around the outside of the bolt without getting any weld onto the bolt. It set onto itself onto the thread. But you can see in the picture that the top of the nut had actually sheared off. So I had to get all my uh, tools out, my welding gear. Hadn't welded for a little while, to be honest, but uh, we got it all out. And uh, this is the video of me. I had to jack up the car a little bit, disconnect the battery. The tricky part was not actually welding the thread that was on the exposed bolt, but trying to weld to the what remained of the nut that had, that was still screwed in partly into the rim. So I'd have to attach something on top of the exposed bolt, but not weld the bolt itself. So I could extract what remains of the nut that was sunken into and still threaded into the rim, if you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, here I am trying to, uh, to weld. I'm using a 1630, 60 rod. Amps is set to about 95, I think it was, which is probably about right. Um, and what I'm trying to do there, I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to weld something onto the top of this sheared off nut. So what I just found was the Dynamec. Um, I use those for welding quite a bit, if I have to do some welding, an old Dynamec that's been used. And it actually fitted nicely on top of that exposed nut, uh, exposed bolt. And so basically all I had to do was to weld around the outside of the that dynamic blade. And hopefully it, it wouldn't go onto the actual exposed bolt itself or onto the thread. And so here I am, first attempt. All I'm trying to do there is just make sure that it's at a 90 degree angle because if it's not when you come to take it off using um, a brace or some socket it's going to wobble all over the place and I think if I remember rightly it wasn't quite on straight there plus the, uh, the, the trolley jack was losing a little bit of um, pressure and it was slowly lowering down at the time here we go this is this is weld stick it is very common um where the actual welding rod i was going to edit that bit out but i've left it in <laughs> but you get the welding rod and it actually sticks sometimes to the material that you're trying to weld and and it can be a combination of things it could be you haven't got quite got the right amp set for the particular rod that you're using um, or you just leave it. And what you have to do initially when you first start, you sort of like kiss it. See me just kissing it there? I was just kissing it. That's the best way. It's just like kiss it first of all, um, as if you were striking a match. And then as soon as it's within that sort of like instant of a second, you just start welding straight away. I taped up the um, around the actual uh, nut itself with some aluminium foil tape just to protect the rim a little bit. Here I am jacking it up again. And the reason why I jack up the, the car is because, as you know, when you're welding, the weld will, will, will roll down with gravity, you know? So what I want to do is to get a good weld all the way around that, that Dynamec blade. So I'm turning the wheel there to just have a quick look, see where the weld is. I want to weld all the way around the outside, ideally welding on the top of it, so I'd weld on the top, turn the wheel around a little bit, weld again on the top, turn the wheel around, weld again on the top, turn it around, check, see where I haven't got any weld and just spot weld it in there. This was the second attempt because I realized that I actually hadn't welded the dynamic blade at a 90 degree angle it was going to wobble if i tried to get it out so i just just tapped it off 
and I'm just going to about to um, reattach it, re-weld it again now back onto the bolt. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. in past tense. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> you took the bar off, so I couldn't see yeah. properly. But yeah, while the bar was on, it did look straight. Yeah, that looks better, doesn't it? Yeah, that does look straight, mate. Yeah, hundred percent. It doesn't have to do perfect. Anyway. Yeah, but it's just so you get that sealed, isn't it? Like you say. Okay, now I'm happy that it's at a 90 degree angle. I'm just going to weld it all the way around. Now. When I did my welding course, um, I mean, they'd probably have kittens if they saw me doing this now. But when I did my welding course, they said the sound that it should make could be like um, an egg frying in a frying pan. And you notice I'm only using one hand there. And that's the way I was taught, don't use two hands, just use one hand. Again, you'll notice that to start the um, the rod welding, you need to strike it as if you're striking a match. You'll just notice I'll do it now. Look, initial strike, like striking a match, just to get it going. Should have put a smaller socket on there, I think. Really, you need a good earth, you know, when you when you're doing that. I might just hold that in my hand actually. I'm trying to put on it. Moment of truth. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy, it's off. It looks pretty ugly to be honest. Perfect. Who said you'd have an hard job doing that? There you go. That's how it's done. Excellent. <laughs> so here's the, uh, the top of the nut that came out with the dynamic but I know it's pretty ugly the welding but um, it is in a confined tight space and all I want to really do is make sure that we've got a good strong weld enough to uh, get it out but it was just enough to uh, weld around the edge not onto the top of the, the nut uh, the bolt itself and we didn't get any weld on the thread and it came out all right in the end so you know job done really 
If you'd like to learn more about the welding course, there's a course that's run in Coventry that called the Central Building and Welding Academy in Coventry. Top guys, give them a call if you're interested in welding.